Yo, what's good, y'all? Happy Friday. Welcome to the John Katz Show, episode number 27. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in and uh, downloading and all that kind of stuff. I, I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, today, I just want to kind of do a, a free flow, free flow show. You know, I don't usually, I don't usually prepare much anyway. I like to kind of come in fresh. I usually make notes because there's a few things I always want to remember to talk about and I get annoyed with myself when uh, I forget some stuff. But to be honest, I just, I've had so much going on lately that uh, I didn't want to plan anything out. I kind of wanted to just come on here and give you guys like a legitimate rant and, uh, you know, talk about life life a little bit. I always joke that this is, you know, a show about nothing. I stole that from Seinfeld, but when people go, you know, what's your podcast about? Like my mom's friend or someone, what you, I heard you got a podcast. What's it about? You know, and I go, I don't know. It's a show about nothing. It ended up being, uh, you know, most of my episodes ended up being political. I'll say it a million times. I did not want to have a political show. It's just a politically charged uh, environment. So, none of that today. No politics today. You're getting uh, you're getting philosopher Johnny in the in the building. Philosophical Johnny in the chat. We're gonna talk about life and uh, maybe some inspirational, motivational. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. You know, maybe share some some thoughts with you guys. I've been having. Myself, I interact a ton on Twitter and, you know, I feel like voice is such a different thing. You know, so much is lost in context when you're typing, especially people have such short attention spans. It's so much different than conversation and voice and those kind of things. And you can really extrapolate so much more. And uh, so, you know, we're going to get into some of that stuff. You know, the the truth is I, I personally have been going through a lot of, uh, difficult stuff myself lately. And, you know, for sure it's in those times when we, we do do the most reflecting, you know, when things are kind of going okay or good, or we're, we're stuck in our rut or we're stuck in our routine. Uh, it's really easy to get used to certain things, you know, and then certain things can happen or events can transpire, changes can happen. Man, it forces you into self-reflection and, and it, it's those moments that A, they stick with you forever, but you know, it's, it's, it's the way they stick with you. It's like, it's, it's a gift. It's giving you a, a window. It's removing a filter when you're in a certain state of mind and you can kind of see yourself from the outside. You can kind of see your life from the outside where you've been, where you're heading, you see it in a different way. You're, you're no longer in the forest. You're kind of outside the forest looking in and, uh, and it, it's tough sometimes. And the stuff that we think about and experience in those moments, that's the stuff that's going to carry us through life. That's the stuff that we need to take as the main lessons in life because we, we don't always have that kind of insight. It's like doing a psychedelic or something. It's like you have a, you know, a shroom trip and you're like, wow, I got to remember that feeling when I was so interconnected to the universe because I know it existed in that moment. So I have to remember that is that it always exists. And I've done that specifically with that. I, I still draw back to those stuff I experimented with, you know, 25 years ago. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know there's more to it because I remember that one time I did all that. LSD or that one time we ate a bunch of shrooms or that, you know, whatever it was. Um, you know, I'm going to remember this forever. This insight, I'm going to remember forever. And, uh, and that happens with big events in our lives naturally. The, the filters get removed, whether it's through a big event. It could be positives and negatives too. Anything that kind of shakes you out of your routine it, make, it, it makes you look at life so much differently. And sometimes it's just for a short period, but the lesson you learn and the feeling, it can be forever. You know, you just kind of have to consciously and cognitively, cognitively, what the fuck? Cognitively, cognitively, Jesus, uh, be aware of that. You just have to kind of cognitively be aware of that kind of stuff while it's happening. You know, I, I'm not going to get into too much of my own specific personal stuff going on right now. It involves other people, yada, yada, yada. 
but but I you know I don't have to to, to kind of share the experiences and the insights and what I've been feeling what I've been thinking and I, I think this stuff is really helpful I think these are the kind of conversations everybody should be having with each other that we're you know we're kind of afraid or ashamed to have you know it's like people just are you know like a nobody wants to seem you know vulnerable or weak or anything like that but you know b everybody's really in like a combative people um hmm. it's a lot more fun and interesting for a lot of people to engage in debate and negativity rather than sharing positivity and solutions and you see that all over the place i i I, you know i was on twitter the other day actually went off twitter for a short time because because i am in such a weird headspace and i was like you know what I don't even want to be on here and and take part in all this stuff when I'm feeling this way. It just seems so grimy and useless. And then I thought to myself, well, first I just started spamming like songs and stuff. First of all, Twitter hates YouTube links. What's up with that? If you put a YouTube link on Twitter, nobody sees it. So you can't share. But I was doing that. I was sharing songs all the time. because I'm like, I'm just going to give people these good live music, really pretty songs, sad songs. And people are like, dude, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, you know what? I'm kind of being a downer here. I'm not talking about anything. I'm just sending all these songs. So I went, I don't want to be negative. I'm going to get out of here. And then it took me about a day and I was like, you know what? I'm I'm the guy always preaching about positivity, whether it's politics or whatever else. I'm always going, hey, wait, wait, wait. And yes, I bitch and complain all the time and I'm a grumpy fuck a lot of the time. But I am Mr. Brightside. I do always look at the silver lining. I'm as cynical and... Uh, and and realistic as I am, I'm, I'm insanely optimistic. And I always, uh, I always hold out hope for the, you know, the best case scenarios and stuff like that. So look, if I'm going to preach that, I got to practice that. So I started sharing all kinds of uplifting things and motivational things. And it's very refreshing. It's, and to be, but I guess the point I was going to make is, you know, I went on Twitter yesterday and I shared all these nice uplifting things and I did kind of have one negative tweet where I was ripping on Howard Stern and uh, and that one got 5,000 likes and the others got 12 likes because p- people like to engage in the negativity and ripping on each other, you know, far more than they want to feel vulnerable and help each other and, and, and do nice things for each other and share solutions and all these. It's like, it, that's every, like, imagine if, go on Twitter or social media and look at the type of discourse going on. The debates about whatever, Corona or politics or race, you name it. And imagine if people had that same energy and were just sharing like positive, inspirational messages with each other and solutions and going, hey, do you have a problem? Maybe I can help you solve that problem. I've had that problem too. Tell me about it. Maybe I can, you know, DM me like we, I do a lot of that. And people in my circle, I see doing that too. They go, hey. If you ever really need anything in real life, I got you. Just message me. That's what it's all about. Like, you change. I don't, you know, I sound like Greta, what's her name? The the environment girl. Thumb, Thornburg, Thumber. We'll change the whole world doing that, man. We really will. We could change the whole world that way. Because cause here's the deal. You know, life is pain. That's a quote, right? Is that Method Man? Bring the pain. Somebody said, met the man, bring the pain. I came to bring the pain hardcore to your brain. Uh, That was terrible. I'm going to edit that out. No, uh, life is pain. And I don't mean that, you know, in some kind of dark way. I mean that like every single one of us will experience pain by being alive. And I don't just mean physical pain. Physical pain's a given. You're going to have a ton of physical pain. But every one of us is going to have loss and have people die that we care about. And we're going to have regrets and things we wish we could have done differently. And we're going to have heartbreak and heartache. And we're going to have all these things. And and every one of us is going to experience that stuff. That is life. You know, I, I, I always say, you, you know, you got to find the joy where you can. And I've not been great at that myself. Again, it's so easy to 
to get in the rut. It's so easy to get into a routine. I think, you know, something that's helped me along the way throughout life is I once heard, and, and again, this isn't in a dark way. Uh, this isn't in a depressing way. But in, in many facets of life, people should lower their expectations on happiness. You know, because life is not generally just happiness. There's so many things that go into it. Not only all the pain I just mentioned, all the responsibility and everything else. The idea is that you find the pockets of joy where you can and that you're mostly, you know, content and proud of what you are all those other times. And then love, you know, from family, from partners, friends, spouse, whatever. You got to find it, it, the all anybody wants. I don't care where you fall opinions on on a million other things. You know, at, at the end of the day, all anybody really wants is love to be understood by somebody else, you know, to find a real human connection with somebody. Um, it's all pointless without that. You know, there, there's no you could do anything if you're not sharing that with somebody and you don't love somebody and they don't love you. And I don't mean in a romantic, I mean, in any capacity, if you don't have people in your life that you love and care for, and there aren't people in your life that love and care for you, it's like, it's almost as if it didn't happen, you know, like we're going to be here and gone. And unless we're connecting and sharing with other people, then, then, Life really does have no meaning at that point. And I don't mean that in some cliche storybook kind of way. I mean that in like a scientific kind of way. Like you'll be here and you'll be gone and you wouldn't have affected anybody on that level. And you, and, and you won't have, sure you could leave certain things behind and you know, but you're, you're not going to have impacted other people's lives on a personal base. You're not going to have made people feel the one thing that they need for them to be connected to the world and to the universe. So, you know, with, with all that suffering comes the realization that it is just all about the love and the human connection. And, uh, and anyone's lucky enough to have that man, just hang on to it and cherish it and realize what it means from like a cosmic standpoint, because, uh, it really is everything. And if you ever sat down one night and did eat a bunch of shrooms, and lay down in a lawn somewhere, you would kind of feel more of the, more of the connection maybe that I'm talking about. You know, maybe I should. I'm gonna share. I, I told you I've been posting. Um, all I've been posting all that inspirational quotes and memes and things online. So I'm gonna share some of those here. I'm gonna edit this out because I'm gonna. I got a. I did not plan to read stuff. So I don't know why I'm telling you all this. But I'm going to look through my phone and dig these up, and I'm going to share some of these with you. When I edit this in post, I'll probably play the clips so you can see the clips. Again, I don't know why I'm sharing all this with you. I'm like that dude who gives you all the unnecessary details. Like, do you ever go to, like, a um, like a technician or, like, a you know, someone comes to repair your water heater or something? You're like, hey, can you fix the thing? And they're like, yeah, yeah. I just got to, I got to call the office. I got to order the, ex, you know, flex capacitor part. Then I'm going to switch out the do it. It's like, bro, I don't, I don't need all the details. Like, can you fix it? Yes. How much is it? Great. Like you don't have to tell me every step you're doing. So anyway, I don't want to be that guy, but yeah, let me read, let me read some of these quotes because you know, a other people's words are better than mine. I think in a lot of cases and then B, um, you know, if even one person hears this or sees this and, and it helps them in some way, like that's, that's everything. Like that's the whole war. Like, think about this. And, and even on Twitter, one of these I shared, like people are saying stuff like just one or two replies. They'll say like, I really, this is exactly what I needed to hear today. Thank you so much. Like this came, I read this at the exact right time. And I think, wow, I said, I go, that made it all worth it. Just knowing you needed to hear it that made it all worth it. If that one person then takes that and applies that to their life when they were in a negative place or they use it and implement it somehow, like that's world. If one person improves from it, that's world changing. I don't know if I'm expressing that properly. Maybe because it's like sometimes you visualize something in your own head so clearly and then you try to express it, but 
the words aren't quite doing it justice, but yeah, I mean, just imagine, you know, if I say something on here, one person hears it on this tiny little show that no one listens to, and they go and they utilize it in their life, and that can improve their life forever. And then it improves their kids' lives. It, it, sometimes it's just one thing you say to someone. You go, someone on the street, you walk up to them, you say, say something to a stranger, you give somebody a compliment, or what have you. It can mean everything to somebody. I've seen a complete stranger walk up to people and go, you have really beautiful hair. You know, those are, you know, sound like surface things or whatever, you know, your hair, your eyes. But like, imagine you're that girl walking around having a bad day, feeling ugly. Maybe your boyfriend just dumped you, whatever. You just failed the test in school. Terrible day. And now some other beautiful woman walks up to you and says, hey, I just, your hair is so gorgeous. Your eyes are so gorgeous, whatever. Like, that might lift that girl's spirits permanently out of that. So, you know what I mean? Like you can help and change people's lives in so many ways just by sharing that kind of stuff. Just by, just by having that energy, just by walking around with that energy, just by being that kind of person. All right. So let me, uh, let me find these clips in my phone real quick and I'm going to play them for you guys. I'm going to watch them as I play them. I'm going to play them for you guys. Again, I don't know why I'm telling you all these details, and this first clip I'm going to show you, this is like a, um, this is, a, it's just a, t it's, these are very short, by the way. So everyone with the low attention span, this is just a teacher kind of giving this lesson to a classroom. I don't know if it's staged or it's one of these inspirational, whatever. The message is great and the way he delivers is, is great. So I'm going to just play that real quick. How heavy is this glass of water? Melissa, would you care to answer? Um, eight ounces. Twelve ounces. The absolute weight. The glass doesn't matter. It depends on how long I hold on to it. If I hold it for a minute, nothing happens. If I hold it for an hour, my arm will begin to ache. If I hold it all day long, my arm will feel numb and paralyzed. Well, the weight of the glass hasn't changed, but the longer I hold on to it, the heavier it becomes. The stresses and the worries of life are like this glass of water. If you think about them for a little while, there's no problem. If you think about it for a little bit longer, it begins to hurt. You think about them all day long, and you'll feel paralyzed, incapable of doing anything. Always remember, put the glass down. So, yeah, I, I love that. You know, he's talking, and I've heard similar analogies before. It had been a while, but he's talking about, you know, something that could seem like a feather. Uh, you know, a small glass of water, an eight-ounce glass of water. You lift it up. It could seem like it weighs, you know, it's eight ounces, it's nothing. But now hold that for an hour, hold it for six hours, hold it for a week. You Could you hold a glass of water up for a week? Uh, you got to look at things that, you got to look at your problems that way. You got to look at things that are hurting you that way. You know, um, pain, pain is bad and uh, emotional pain. I'm not talking about physical pain here. Where uh, these these quotes and videos have to do with our our emotions and our and our psyches and so forth. So that's what I'm talking about here. But pain's the worst, and pain of loss is the worst. But when you mix in regret, re <laughs> regret is the real the real real motherfucker because because with regret you know you could have done something differently you know you could have done something to change it and you have to live especially if you're talking about like loss or just ruining something in your life just messing something up really bad it's like you everyone that you go man if i just did this one thing it's it's all so simple and clear now right if i just went back to that one day and did this one thing differently Everything would be different, right? And that's a hard, hard pill to swallow because in the moment of regret, you see the way you should have felt when you were there originally in that situation or with that opportunity and what have you. And and now you, you'd give anything. You'll crawl, the, you'll, you're climbing the walls. You give anything when you realize it or when you when the thing gets so messed up. 
and you realize what you could have done to make it not that way. That's the tough one. So I would apply, you know, regret most when I think about that water. And that's, by the way, this is hugely important. It's not to say to discount the regret. On the contrary, you don't want to hang on to it and beat your head against the wall. That's what you don't want to do. What you do want to do, you know, is is learn from it. Again, it sounds cliche, but you got to learn from it and then apply it and then make sure you don't repeat that again. That's all you can do. You know, whether you'll ever be able to repair or salvage the thing, you know, that may be done. That 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 door may be gone. But you're going to have another door. You know what I mean? Um, the, the, the world keeps spinning. The, the life keeps going on. You know, the sun comes out. All that stuff. It, it's, it's nothing stopping for you. Nothing stopping for you to sit there and feel sorry for all the things you could have done differently and you should have done this you should you never go back you never go back the only honor you can give it is to say okay I see it now and I'll never do that again and remember you know you got to remember it you got to ingrain it because then when you're about to make another decision about something else you draw on those things just like I was talking about drawing on experiences before you draw on it and you go okay this is what it felt like when I did that the last time this is what I need to do differently this time because if, if I don't, then I'm going to end up where I was before and I, I won't be able to live with that again. You know what I mean? You remember that feeling and how bad it was knowing you could have done it different because because regret will regret will just eat you up. Regret will eat you the fuck up when when you blame yourself and 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 look and rightfully so. Because if you have regret, you probably did do something wrong. You probably did do make a big mistake. You probably were really inconsiderate or a million worse things. And again, you got to learn from it, but don't hold it. Because it, it, it's easier when there's someone else to blame, right? You know, if you think back to hard times in your life and things that were really hurtful, the times where you felt you did nothing wrong, right? Or this this event just happened. There was a random car accident that couldn't be avoided. Uh, you know, knock on wood. Um, you know, somebody did something to me and it was no fault of my own. Those hurt, but you can stomach them a little easier because you go, you know what? I acted the right way. I did the right thing. That's on them. But when you're the one who made the mistake, when you're the guy who was texting and driving and swerved out of that lane and, you know, hurt somebody or whatever you're the one that's now got to live with that so again things can't be undone but you can certainly repair things you can 100 percent repair things even though you can't go back and undo the original thing you can repair it you can learn from it you can move on you can focus on the positive speaking of i'm going to share Another little video with y'all. Sit tight while I pull that up. By the way, even the the last clip I shared, the guy talking to the class, I don't know who that is or who these people are. Somebody's probably going to comment and go, that's, you know, Fred Myers from, you know, Nova University. I don't know. I don't know who these people are. Most of what I'm showing you, it's just random clip. I could probably find out who they are, but I didn't do prep for the show. So I'm not telling you who anybody is. Y'all can look them up. I'm just sharing this stuff because I find it hella useful and I think y'all will too. The human brain cannot comprehend the negative. It is incapable. I'll prove it. You ready? Don't think of an elephant. Uh, What happens is we very often reinforce things when we put things in the negative. Skiers know this. Have you ever seen skiers go through trees? Do you know how they do that? It's very easy. If you go through trees on skis and you go, don't hit a tree, don't hit a tree, don't hit a tree, guess what you're watching? You're only looking at trees. As opposed to follow the snow, follow the path, follow the path. It's the same thing for you. If you focus on the obstacles, all you will see is obstacles. If you focus on the path through the trees, all you will see is path through the trees. I really love this video. Uh, it, It really speaks so close to home with me. You know, he's talking about uh, obstacles and focus on the negative and how the human brain, if you're thinking about the negative, you're only perceiving the negative, right? 
Uh, he used the analogy of the skiers retrieve, but man, if it's not, if that's not something I haven't done my whole life. And I know a lot of people, a lot of people do the same thing. You know, fear, fear is the biggest obstacle, right? Like fear is everything. Fear really determines most everything we do. And, and, you know, you don't have to even suffer from some sort of anxiety disorder or anything like that to just, you know, to have fears of so many different things and doubts about things. And, if, if you're only thinking about those fears and doubts rather than the clear path toward whatever goal you want or whatever you need, want out of life or need in life, you're always going to be seeing those obstacles. You're always going to be seeing those fears. You're always going to be seeing those doubts. So what does that do for you? What does it do for you to waste even 10 seconds thinking about what if this goes wrong or what if that goes wrong? You can only... It, 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 you're wasting time. You're wasting time even thinking about it. You know, all all of this boils down to the simple fact, and this I, I talk about forever, which is you just have the one life. We get this one chance. We don't even know what we're doing here. We don't even know how we got here, what it means. We just know we have the one shot at it. <laughs> and you're going to waste so much time and energy thinking about bad thoughts and bad things and what if this was better and what if that was better it doesn't accomplish anything acknowledge it just like we were talking about acknowledge it learn from it apply it to the next thing and and devote yourself 10 times harder to making sure you don't make the same mistake again now this is a this this is a really good video don't uh you know some of these seem a little dark or dreary don't take them that way they're kind of motivational when uh, when you think about it and uh, this is specifically talking about about time. When asked what's the biggest mistake we make in life, the Buddha replied, the biggest mistake is you think you have time. Time is free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. And once it's lost, you can never get it back. You, you can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. And once it's lost, you can never get it back. I mean, that sounds dark and depressing. But someone actually replied when I posted that. They were like, no pressure. Again, it's the kind of thing you hear and you need, they need to apply it going forward. <laughs> you know, um, our most valuable thing we have is time. They always say what the, the richest, most powerful people in the world, that's what they're focused on they have everything else the only thing they can't buy is time that's why you see them all working so hard on these anti-aging and all these things and we'll we'll get there eventually and people will live way longer but if you have everything in the world if you're a billionaire and you have an amazing family and love and everything else what's the one thing you can't access and that's it and it's the most valuable thing and it's gone when it's gone and uh, life is so short. You walk outside and get smacked by a bus today. This is supposed to be a positive show. And I'm talking about getting killed by buses. But it's true. And and people can just look at their own lives for examples of this. You know, I can look at my own dad who I lost uh, just two years ago. Uh, and on other things. And when that happens, you say, Wow. Life is so damn short. And again, when you're in those moments and you're feeling that way, remember it and apply it. And I say these things because I'm guilty of not doing it enough myself too. And, you know, this, this isn't, these aren't the kind of less, you know, you just hear something, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta really keep reminding yourself of these kind of things. The only way anyone's ever going to actually grow and change and improve is if they make these concerted efforts to do so. No one's no one's going to do that for you. Nobody's sitting there waiting to come help. You know, again, everybody should help everybody. Everybody should do whatever they can to help each other. But you can't count on it. You can't count on it. And certainly nobody's going to motivate you and stand next to you and say, get up do this thing go to you got to figure out what the hell you want 
what you've done wrong, what you've done right, what's making you happy, what's not making you happy. And then just laser focus on it and go, you know what? I'm going to be dead someday and I don't even know what comes after this, but I'm damn sure going to do the things I want to do while I'm here. And it's the only opportunity I have to do it. And that's it. You know, again, I'm not, I'm never going to share the, that's enough clips. I'm not going to share the Kevin, there's a Kevin Hart clip that I constantly always kind of even jokingly rant about when people complain because he, he goes, he's talking about, it's on Joe Rogan's podcast. He's talking about the sun don't fucking stop. The sun does not stop for anybody, regardless how you feel. And sorry for plagiarizing you, Kevin Hart, regardless how you feel, the sun's going to come out in the morning. The world's not stopping for you, you know, and some, something I always talk about is from a karmatic standpoint. Is that even a word? I use that word all the time. Karmatic root word, karma, K R A R M A. Like, is that a word? Karmatic. If not, it should be like the adjective for the noun karma from a karmatic standpoint, the karma that you're putting into the world. It's so disrespectful when I, and that, you, that you really got to remind yourself of all the time because it, it can't be understated, which is to say this, you know, if you have food and clean water and clothing and a, and a roof over your head and then on top of which any luxuries like, you know, a car and, and spending money on things that you don't need and that give you joy and stuff like, dude, if you're one of those people, you've already hit the biggest lottery that ever existed in the universe statistically speaking and literally figuratively all of it you hit the biggest lottery ever the biggest powerball ever you know they they say and i've said it before that there's a one in 400 trillion chance one in 400 trillion chance of you even being alive right now and you factor in all that other stuff i'm talking about with with having the food and water and shelter and clothing and stuff you're now one in a quadrillion is that what comes after trillion quadrillion you're now one in quadrillion of being in that situation you already hit everything anybody can it's like so now you're gonna feel sorry about think about all the people that didn't have those things think about all the people that don't have them think about all the people who lived their whole life without many of those things and then died so I do feel it's disrespectful in a way to sit around putting that energy out because whatever gift we've been given, whatever God is or whatever form the universe or whatever's going on, whether you believe in God or not, whether you believe in afterlife or not, no one can explain what we're doing here. No one can, if you're going to put that energy out there, well, all these other humans are suffering and have suffered far worse fates. And again, a lot of people are suffering for real. And if you're suffering for real and in pain, it still applies because there's always somebody worse off. And right now, if I'm going to sit here and feel sorry for myself and be upset and regretful and all these things, there's still hundreds of millions of people on this planet that would probably still chop off their foot or their freaking legs or something just to trade places with me. And I got to always keep that in mind. And I don't mean they trade places with me because I'm great. I mean, they would trade places with my situation. You know what I mean? Not with me, like they want to be me, meaning with my situation. Living in a free country where I have food and water and shelter and those things, they would give their life. They'd give their life for it. And I'm going to sit here and feel sorry for myself about stupid mistakes I made and things. And though those mistakes are real and those mistakes impact my life, may have even ruined my life. But it's still disrespectful. From a karmatic karma standpoint, it is still disrespectful, in my opinion. And I remind myself of that all the time. That's a huge one. Someone else reminded me of a quote recently from uh, Jordan Peterson. The person that said the quote to me, I believe, actually was they were paraphrasing and combined a couple, a couple different quotes. I actually liked the way they said it. So I'm going to pull that up. I want to read it to you. All right. So the, the first uh, the, the quote is it was read to me originally. And like I said, it kind of combines two different things and it's Jordan Peterson. And I'm not one of these Jordan Peterson guys. I don't know the guy's quotes. Listen, I don't, 
I'm not one of these people that's obsessed with Adam Carolla used to always say it's ironic. I'm quoting someone else when saying I'm not obsessed with other people's stuff. If anything, I quote Carolla more than anyone because back in the day I did used to listen to him a lot and made a lot of unique points. But something he used to say is don't spend too much time in other people's museums, you know, build, build your own museum. And there's, there's so much truth to that. And uh, it's also ironic. I'm saying that on my own podcast, don't take my advice. Don't take Adam's advice. No, if listen, if you want, uh, if you want emotional stoner pontifications, you came to the right place. You don't, you don't want to waste too much time on other people's thoughts. You want to take what you need from it and then apply stuff to your own life and then build your own, build your own museum. That's a whole tangent there. In any case, uh, here's a quote, stand up straight with your shoulders back. And treat yourself like someone you're responsible for helping. Now, again, that's combining two different... Because I shared it on Twitter and somebody came in and uh, they had Googled it. And they found me another quote where he had started talking about, you know, stand up straight with your shoulders back. So there is a whole quote about that, which is great, which I'm about to read. But the part about treating yourself like somebody you're in charge of helping, that comes from his list of rules. And I wanted to read some of that as well because that part really hits home too on a a lot of stuff I want to talk about. Okay, here it is. A quote from Jordan Peterson. To stand up straight with your shoulders back is to accept the terrible responsibility of life with eyes wide open. It means deciding to voluntarily transform the chaos of potential into the realities of habitable order. It means adopting the burden of self-conscious vulnerability and accepting the end of the unconscious paradise of childhood, where finitude and mortality are only dimly comprehended. It means willingly undertaking the sacrifices necessary to generate a productive and meaningful reality. Damn, I almost want to read that twice. There's a, there's a lot of big words in there. Yeah, he, he's talking about the sacrifices recognize, at the end of that, recognizing the sacrifices necessary to have a meaningful reality. There's, there's no life without meaning, purpose. If you don't have meaning and purpose, you're going to just feel so dead. And if you want meaning and purpose in your life, you you got to sacrifice for it. You got you got to have to nothing's free. You got to give something up whether it's your time, whether it's your energy, whatever. Whether you physically have to give something up, whether you have to do something, change something, whatever it is. You never going nothing of meaning or value is ever going to come to you. And I don't mean monetary value. I mean real value. Nothing's ever going to come to you that adds true value to your life. If you don't give something to get it, do you follow me? All right. So here, here's the rest of the quote of, you know, the second part of what I read before where he's talking about treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. I kind of like to say, treat yourself like someone you are responsible for taking care of. It's the same thing, which is to say, if you were put in charge of another person and you're Sole responsibility was to make sure that person was good and happy and healthy and okay and had all the things they needed. You would you would do everything possible to make that happen. But people don't do it with themselves. You know, people like to mistreat themselves the way they would never mistreat good people. You know, good people would never mistreat others the way they treat themselves. And whether that's physically the stuff that they're putting into their bodies whether they're not sleeping enough and, you know, exercise, whatever, that's all on the surface, but that's a huge part of it too. You, you want to be a happy, healthy person, but then also just depriving yourself of joy. Again, people intentionally, whether they realize it or not, they're depriving themselves of joy and happiness, and they wouldn't do that to other people in the same way. You know, he goes, he goes on to say, people are better at filling prescriptions, even dogs. It's true. If you were, you know, put in charge of taking care of a dog, People are better at filling prescriptions for their dogs than themselves. It's true. You wouldn't, I once heard somebody say, you wouldn't, you wouldn't wake your dog up and feed him a donut, coffee, and cigarettes because you feel like you were killing your dog, but we do it to ourselves, no problem. Uh, 
people don't like to treat themselves as well as they would treat someone else that they're responsible for taking care of, responsible for helping. He says, you are not your own possession to torture and mistreat because your being is tied up with that of others. Therefore, mistreating yourself will harm others. Think about that for a minute. You know, if somebody loves you and cares about you and you're mistreating yourself, you are actually being selfish. You are actually hurting that other person. You don't even think about that. And as far as being responsible for other people, you should feel more responsible for people that love you. And I am the worst at that and have been the worst at that because you always just kind of justify it in your mind. You're stuck in your own head. Everybody's stuck in their own head 24-7. You're always obsessing about your own issues. It's really hard to just kind of take yourself out of that and go, you know what? This other person, look at what they're going through. Like, that's way worse than what I'm going through. And that person loves me. And I can't even get out of my own head and stop thinking about all my own crazy stuff. Like, what if I just went and helped that person instead? That's going to probably make us both better. You know? It, it, it really, for, for most people, it really does boil down to I believe fear and, and discomfort. Again, people are afraid of so much and it impedes our lives. It affects our lives. You know, people don't want to take risks. They don't want to get out of their own comfort zones. You don't want to put something on the line that you feel like, man, it's so important. What if it goes wrong? You know, but if, if, if you don't take those chances, like, I'm somebody who's actually dealt with, I've, I've never talked about this on here. I, you know, fuck it. There's, there's just mentioned the other day. There's not the stigma around this stuff. Dude. I personally dealt with some pretty serious anxiety stuff myself. And I, listen, I'm not, compl- I'm not that guy either. You know, anxiety is like mental illness became a fad. Like we never, we never stop at the, at the sweet spot. Like when I was a kid in school and I had a hard time going to school right? Uh, you know, I'd be a mess in the morning. I'd be throwing up in the morning. I'd throw up at school for no reason. I was just anxious. I had no reason. Some, some days were great. Some days were good. I always had friends. I always socialized and did a million things, but, um, you know, a lot of the, and again, I'm sharing this, like if anybody, I'm not embarrassed by this stuff anymore. I still deal with a lot of it to this day. You know, I handle it all. I learned, I went, you know, certain types of therapy help, certain types of things. I do a whole show on anxiety. I'm not going to do that. The point is you, you will spend a lot of time fearful of things for seemingly no reason at all. And people that have legitimate anxiety, that's why I say a minute ago, you know, everybody today, it's like, I have anxiety. Well, I have anxiety. When I was a kid, we went from, you didn't talk about it. So again, I had real problems. But I didn't talk about that. There was no such word as anxiety. You would just keep it to yourself, you know. And looking back now, that was always, that was the hardest part. The keeping it to yourself or the feeling ashamed of of certain things or your fears. Looking back now, it was probably 100 kids at my school that had similar shit going on. Um, And if I knew that, I would have felt way better. I was always like, oh, what if people know I'm feeling this way? What if my friend knows whatever? You can extrapolate that. And again, I'm I'm talking about having a legitimate anxiety. I didn't know what the hell I was even freaking out about. And even to this day, a lot of those feelings will come in and you just kind of have to sit back and put it in perspective and understand all these things I'm talking about and understand that everybody's going through something. You know what I mean? And everybody is stuck in their own heads. They have to live in that head of theirs 24-7. You got to deal with those issues. It's it's to take yourself outside of it. You know, look, and and I'll say it on here too. If anybody does have, you know, issues and things, I'm no therapist, but, you know, feel free to email me or DM me on Twitter at John Katz Show on Twitter or uh, John Katz Show at gmail.com. I'm dead serious. Email me anytime. If you want to talk about any problems you're having, I'll do my best to try to help you out. I really will. You know, but yeah, I, I, I understand what it's like to be completely 
paralyzed by fear and doubt and all that stuff. And it applies to every aspect of life. And, and I think that, um, the majority of humans for sure at some point or another give in to those fears and those worries and those anxieties, even the people that you would look at and say that, you know, they're, they're perfectly healthy. Every, everybody's got a little bit of something. You know what? There's a, uh, there's a poem I'm going to read. I'll pull this up. I know this is a long show. I'm about to I'm about to wrap things up, but this is an, an older poem. I actually saw it's called George Gray by Edgar Lee Masters. And uh, I actually saw this on a TV show probably, I don't know, 20 years ago. My mom's going to probably watch this and try to take credit because she watched or it's a cheesy show. She used to watch this show, too. I happen to like it. It was called um, it was called Once and Again, like Billy Campbell and Sandra something. Andrew Ward. My mom's for sure. Do you guys parents steal all your your stuff? My mom's constantly taking credit for every song and movie I ever liked. Like if I go, oh man, that movie was so great. She'll go, that was my favorite movie. Meanwhile, like she only knows it because I used to watch it when I was a kid. But she really did like the show. So in any case, um, this really hits on what I've been talking about this whole time. George Gray. I have studied many times the marble which was chiseled for me, a boat with a furled sail at rest in a harbor. In truth, it pictures not my destination, but my life. For love was offered me, and I shrank from its disillusionment. Sorrow knocked at my door, but I was afraid. Ambition called to me, but I dreaded the chances. Yet all the while I hungered for meaning in my life, and now I know that we must lift the sail and catch the winds of destiny wherever they drive the boat. To put meaning in one's life may end in madness, but life without meaning is the torture of restlessness and vague desire. It is a boat longing for the sea and yet afraid. You know, the last couple lines of that really, uh, that that's what really hits it, which is to put meaning in one's life may end in madness, but life without meaning is the torture of restlessness and vague desire. Damn, it's so true. Because again, if you want meaning in your life, if you want purpose in your life, you're going to have to do crazy shit, give up stuff, sacrifice things, work, work your ass. You're going to have to do something. And, and that pursuit may well end in madness. And it may end in pain and regret, all these other things. You may make mistakes. You may do all kinds. But the restlessness and the vague desire is worse. And not only is it worse, it's a waste. You know what I mean? It's like you're, you're wasting your life. Uh, but yeah, it, you know... I, I relate to that poem so much too because of my life and my own fears and anxieties. And when you're uncomfortable, it's so easy to just say, you know what, let me be comfortable. Let me take this discomfort away. Let me just, I'm going to just stay home today, watch some TV, you know, curl up, eat some pizza, whatever, like, and I'm not saying that's bad. Everybody should sit around and watch movies and eat pizza because, you know, you're getting joy out of that. But if you're doing it and you'd rather be doing something else, if, if you're doing it and you're not enjoying it and you're not with the people that you want to enjoy it with or you're, you, you feel like I should be out there doing X, Y, and Z and I keep thinking about this in my head and this is what I want to do and you're choosing not to because that thing is too uncomfortable, go do that thing. You know, you, you got to do the thing that makes you uncomfortable. If it didn't make you uncomfortable, it wouldn't be good for you. If it seemed easy and comfortable, then it would be peanut. You know, it, it wouldn't be that impactful on your life. Whatever scares you the most is the thing you should probably be doing. If, you know, unless it scares you from, you know, I don't mean scares you like I might die. Scares you from a vulnerability standpoint, from an I might fail standpoint, from a what if I don't succeed at this? What if this person judges me? What if people look at me like I'm stupid? What if I, you, you can't, you can't think about that. I mean, again, you're wasting your precious time. You're wasting your life. You're wasting every gift of, of the only, of the only 
entity that you will never get back. Time. Last one. I'm going to read one more poem. You all probably know this is a little more famous. This, is, this poem's called Invictus. I actually had heard Morgan Freeman recite this on a talk show. Charlie, what's his face? Many, many years ago. And uh, Morgan probably recited it better than me, although he did it from memory, which I am not doing. And uh, it, it, it really sums all this up. And I'm going to wrap up the show because this went way too long. And listen, again, if any of this helps one person, there's me talking about my own anxiety and fears or whatever. I'm not embarrassed of that. Y'all want to have more conversation discourse, hit me up. I should do a whole episode about it. If anybody gets any value out of this, then that's great. And uh, even if they don't, you know what? It's cathartic for me to get on here and rant to nobody. So I'm happy to do it. And in any case, this is Invictus. This is by William Ernest Henley. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears, looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. And that poem just speaks dead for itself, which is, you control this dang thing. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter how painful. It doesn't matter how regretful. It doesn't matter all the tears and the blood. It doesn't matter to your life. But so, yeah, I mean, if you're going to take anything from any of this, it's that 90% of the stuff that ails us is because we choose to think about it and we choose to let it ail us. And most of all of that is is within our control to some point. And the stuff that's not within our control, again, use it as a lesson and move on from it. If you want to hang on to that forever, it's going to kill you. Um, and then sit down, think about, okay, what do I want? What did I do wrong? How do I get it? And, uh, and like Jordan Peterson said, treat yourself like someone you're in charge of taking care of. Use the other analogy before, and it, it, it goes along hand in hand, which is, Treat your life like a video game. Now, that sounds stupid. I don't mean GTA like go kill yourself. What I mean is if you had a video game and you wanted to beat the game, you wouldn't take your character and then, you know, go sit down and do dumb things and waste your time thinking about silly things. You would be going, where's the next objective? Where's the next piece I need? Where's the next clue? How do I level up to the next level? People don't do that with their lives. A lot of people do. But a ton of us don't. A ton of us don't do that. And, uh, you know, unless, unless you're really willing to sit there, willing and able to sit there and look at yourself from the outside and see those types of things objectively, you really do. You really got to look at your life like you're someone else you're supposed to care for, like you're in a video game, all that kind of stuff. And go, if I wanted this character in this game, this person or this to achieve the highest level possible, to get everything that, what would you do? How would you control that character? What would you do? You know, and then maybe in a, in a game, people do it because in real life, it's hard. It's easy to sit on the couch and wiggle the sticks. It's hard to get up, actually put in the work and sacrifice to do those things. But you still have to look at it that way because if you actually do sit and look at it that way, it gives you the energy and motivation to get up and do it because you go, oh, shit. Look at me. Look how I must look to, to the world. You know, you see yourself the way others would see you. And what am I going to leave? What's my legacy going to be? When I'm gone, who, who's going to have remembered me? Who will I have impacted? How will I be? What will I be known for? How will I, how will I be remembered by the people I love and by the people who love me? What, what will I have given to them? 
what will I have, what value will I have added to their lives? What what meaning and purpose will I have put into my own life? These are existential questions. And it's very easy to get all worked up about Trump versus Biden and, and all these other things. But again, the lights are going to go out in a minute and you'll be gone. And you'll have spent so much time obsessing about stuff that didn't help you a, a single bit. And if, uh, if I could impart anything, it'd be that. And I've been all over the place today. So I hope you guys uh, appreciated this episode. And thank you, really. I'm, I'm really, I'm going to end it on that. The Invictus poem was enough. That, that's inspirational enough for everybody. I hope you all have an amazing weekend and a nice uh, Friday night. And I will be back again soon. I uh, love and appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Peace.